Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're celebrating the colossal world that is the MonsterVerse. And it's best you buckle up because we're starting with a rundown of the most badass Titans. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most badass titans in the MonsterVerse. For this list, we're looking at the giant monsters in Legendary Cinematic Universe that most demonstrated their might and looked awesome doing it. We'll only be looking at the versions that appeared between 2014's Godzilla and 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong, and won't be taking into account their previous incarnations, Toho or otherwise. Also, as we will be discussing key battles, expect some spoilers. Which King of the Monsters would you swear your allegiance to? Number 10. Methuselah Judging by appearances, Methuselah definitely earns its biblical name. While we've yet to see the hulking monstrosity go mano a mano against another titan, we'd have to imagine that bringing it down would be quite the ordeal, like taking on a mountain. Because it practically is one. Originating from a monarch outpost outside Munich, Germany, Methuselah's awakening at the hands of Ghidorah upends the whole valley, causing a series of rock slides. We imagine it isn't the fastest on land or sea, as it arrives late to the party in Boston. But it caused a good deal of devastation along the way. On every continent, the Titans are triggering earthquakes, wildfires, tsunamis, and disasters we don't even have names for yet. If we had to assign stats, we'd probably give his agility a 2, but his defense is a solid 10. Number 9. Warbats We're getting some strange radar activity. We're gonna circle back. Whoa! serpentine flyers don't have much screen time in Godzilla vs. Kong, but they roll out quite the welcome wagon for the big ape when he arrives in Hollow Earth. With the body of a snake and the wings of a bat, they prove to be quite agile opponents. While their long fangs are on full display, they seem to fight smartly rather than viciously. Like many terrestrial constrictors, they'll quickly wrap themselves around an opponent. But the real kickers are the wings, which double down on the suffocation tactic by restricting airspace. If it weren't for the humans, we can't say for certain if Kong would have survived these beasts. Number 8. Skull Crawlers That's a big one. Kong's primary adversaries on Skull Island, skull crawlers are responsible for the near extinction of his entire species, including the deaths of his parents. So naturally, Kong exterminates any he comes across. He can handle them as long as he gets to them when they're still small. Likened to devils, these titanous lizards dwell underground and emerge to hunt. They have prehensile tails and tongues, and their powerful jaws can deal crippling damage. Since they only have two limbs, they're easy to knock down, but prove surprisingly fast when on the run. The largest of their number, Skull Devil, aka the big one, puts up quite a fight against Kong before he's bested. Number 7. Mutos Standing for massive, unidentified terrestrial organism, Mutos hold the distinction of being the first Titan antagonists in the MonsterVerse, pushing the King of the Monsters to the brink in 2014's Godzilla. Pesky creatures, the Mutos are parasites that prey on Godzilla's kind, in order to lay their eggs inside their fallen foes. They can communicate with echolocation, which makes them strategic fighters when teaming up. While the female Muto is larger, the male can fly and unleash an electromagnetic pulse. I 
both have brutal hooked jaws that can pierce through just about anything. Number six, Mothra. Meet Titanus Mosura, or as we like to call her, Mothra. The queen of the monsters, Mothra seems to have a cooler head on her shoulders, or thorax. That said, she knows how to dish out damage when she needs to, as evidenced during her aerial bout with Rodan, in which she impales him with her stinger. <laughs> She's also armed with raptorial forelimbs, powerful wings, and silk webbing. Admittedly, she doesn't have the size and brute strength of many other titans, but you'd still want her on your team, as her healing abilities can turn the tide of any fight. In one of the most selflessly badass acts, Mothra sacrifices herself to give Godzilla the energy boost he needs to destroy Ghidorah. Number 5. Rodan Rodan gets overshadowed by some iconic company in Godzilla King of the Monsters, but in no way does that detract from how awesome he is. Known in legend as the Fire Demon, Rodan emerges from his monarch outpost in a Mexican volcano, and quite the dramatic entrance it is. Sure to keep the fire going, Rodan can emanate a staggering amount of heat, and Mothra gets severely burned during their face-off in Boston. Also part of Rodan's arsenal are his sharp beak and talons, and the sonic waves from his massive wings. While he might not pack as heavy of a punch as other titans on this list, Rodan's aerial velocity and heat signature make him an agile and deadly opponent. Number 4. Mecha Godzilla. The only human-made titan on this list, this baddie is still no slouch when it comes to measuring up against the heavies. Inspired by Godzilla's design, but certainly not beholden to it, Mechagodzilla brings to the table a plethora of internal weapons, from missile launchers to buzzsaw claws to a tail drill. Its proton scream is even powerful enough to withstand Big G's atomic breath. was originally intended to be piloted by a human, the consciousness of Ghidorah gave Mechagodzilla complete autonomy, making it all the more savage. Oh, Though it did ultimately fall to Godzilla and Kong in its first outing, it was also outnumbered. Number 3. King Kong Perhaps the most intelligent titan on this list, Kong's brains are perhaps exceeded only by his brawn, and when you pair the two together, you had better watch out. Ostensibly the last of his species, Kong makes a pretty compelling case against his extinction, as he consistently manages to handle any challenge that comes his way. What makes him even more unique, however, is the fact that he's one of the only titans with the wherewithal and dexterity to use tools and weapons. In Godzilla vs. Kong, he reclaims an ancestral battle axe in Hollow Earth, which, when paired with Godzilla's atomic breath, can cut through nearly any material. He may not be King of the Monsters, but Kong is still a king to us. Number 2. King Ghidorah This villainous titan Ghidorah brings an otherworldly presence to the Monsterverse, partly because he isn't actually from this world. Indeed, Ghidorah is actually an extraterrestrial entity that seeks to destroy civilization, and definitely has the firepower to do it. Oh, shit. The dragon-like monster causes massive storms around him, and can fire devastating gravity beams out of his three mouths. Much like a Hydra, Ghidorah is extremely difficult to kill, as cutting off one head will only result in it regenerating right back. It 
it is incredibly fortunate that Godzilla was able to take him down, because this king's reign would have been incredibly bleak. <laughs> Number 1. Godzilla The OG, the king of the monsters himself, Godzilla doesn't get by on reputation alone. He earns it through tenacity and sheer power. The overgrown lizard is capable of destroying anything in his path, and his highly durable skin makes him a tough opponent to take down. He is, at the same time, the unstoppable force and the immovable object. Still, it's Godzilla's party tricks that are most memorable, as his atomic breath is a classic staple of the character. Never was it put to more badass use than down the throat of a Muto. Moreover, Godzilla can absorb and emit radiation at an astounding level, going full-on nuclear in King of the Monsters. Long live the king. It's now time to journey through the MonsterVerse timeline as we explore the epic saga of Godzilla, Kong, and their fellow titans. Ancient species owned this earth long before mankind. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're diving into the titanic and surprising timeline of the MonsterVerse. If you haven't seen everything from the 2014 film through Godzilla Kong New Empire, beware of spoilers ahead. Godzilla, who hasn't been seen in over five years. A long time ago in the hollow earth far, far away from the surface of the planet, monsters roamed freely in an otherworldly habitat. While a few of them visited prehistoric humans from time to time, the Titans mostly kept to themselves. These creatures adapted to live deeper in the oceans, further underground, absorbing radiation from the planet's core. This made it hard for researchers to paint an exact history of what they were up to in those ancient times. However, early human records confirmed that two major monster conflicts happened in the early eons of the Earth. At some point, the extraterrestrial Ghidorah arrived on Earth and tried to dominate all the other creatures. Well, you mean an alien? Yes. He's not part of our natural order, and he's not meant to be here. A false king. An invasive species. But Godzilla and Mothra worked together to literally put the dragon on ice. The second major event that occurred during this ancient era was the Great Titan War. This conflict saw Godzilla and Kong's ancestors warring for supremacy and control. In the end, the primates would lose to the big lizards. While some apes hid in the hollow earth, a few of them decided to make a new home on Skull Island. And then one day, the damnest thing happened. Some of the things they were afraid of started protecting them against the things that were eating them. They wouldn't be the only monsters that ventured up to the Earth's surface. Although Titans continued to appear at different times in history, their sightings were largely dismissed as myths. But humanity started taking monsters seriously again after World War II began. In 1943, Bill Randa was serving on a U.S. Navy ship when it was suddenly wrecked by an ion dragon. Initially, the government tried to brush aside the rumors that a monster was responsible. But they changed their tune a decade later when one of their nuclear submarines awoke Godzilla. In 1954, the first time a nuclear submarine ever reached the lower depths, it awakened something. After the creature munched on a few atomic vessels, the government paid a visit to the few existing members of the Monarch Monster Organization. Bill Randa, Lee Shaw, and Keiko Mura were able to come up with a plan to lure Godzilla out. The trio earnestly wanted to study the Titan. However, the government tried to kill the kaiju with another bomb as soon as it revealed itself. While the Monarch trio was devastated at first, it wasn't long before they discovered that Godzilla survived. Their success with the kaiju would lead each of them to take big risks that came with huge consequences. During a Titan recon mission in 1959, a hive of insect creatures pulled Keiko Miura into the hollow earth. Three years later, Li Sha tried to explore the mysterious place with an entire crew. But the mission went sideways and he was declared missing. Although Bill Randa lost his closest friends, he didn't lose his enthusiasm for monster research. 
In 1973, he got official approval to take a crew of researchers and soldiers to the mysterious Skull Island. Randa's ambitious plan helped confirm that monsters like Kong were still present on the Earth's surface. Yesterday, I was a crackpot. But today? So this was never about geology. You drop those charges to flush something out. Unfortunately, neither he nor most of his allies made it off the island alive. He seemed to be the last original monarch member to die, until Li Sha mysteriously re-emerged in 1982. You disappeared during Operation Hourglass in 1962. 20 years ago. Since he hadn't aged in the 20 years he'd been missing, Scientists assumed he fell into a part of the hollow earth where time moves differently. In the wake of the Shaw and Skull Island incidents, Monarch decided to go to extreme lengths to keep the existence of monsters secret. But the organization couldn't stop humanity from coming face to face with Titans in 2014. After a creature classified as a Muto fed on and destroyed a nuclear facility, Godzilla emerged to confront the beast in Hawaii. Before the global public could truly accept that monsters exist, Godzilla returned to fight two Mutos in San Francisco. Soldiers ultimately decided to side with the Big G over the other two creatures. While they were happy to see Godzilla achieve an impressive victory over his foes, the battle wasn't without its casualties. Keiko's granddaughter Kate lost many people she cared about in one fell swoop. Meanwhile, Dr. Emma Russell lost her son during the chaos in San Francisco. Their traumatic experiences would eventually have ripple effects that would further change this new world of monsters. After we lost Andrew, I swore his death would not be in vain that I would find an answer, a solution to why the Titans were rising. Kate's father, Hiroshi, mysteriously disappeared shortly after the Titan battle in San Francisco. While she was looking for closure in 2015, she found out her father worked for Monarch, helped Lee Shaw escape prison, and met a lot of monsters. <sighs> Kate's journey seemingly came to an end when she and Shaw fell into the hollow earth. Fortunately, she was able to reunite with both her new allies and her still youthful grandmother Keiko while in the mysterious land. You know, who are you? I'm your granddaughter. During their attempt to escape the hollow earth, Lee gets stranded while helping his friends get to safety. His allies end up emerging next to an angry Kong on an extremely stormy Skull Island in 2017. While it's currently unknown what Kate's group did next, we do know the world faced another dangerous monster two years later. Should we go? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, go, go. What the hell is going on? In 2019, Dr. Emma Russell decided to help awaken kaijus around the world in the hopes that the Titans could make the world a better place. But she soon regretted her decision after the gruesome Ghidorah opened its eyes. The draconic kaiju immediately tried to ascend to the top of the monster food chain by wounding or killing any opponent that stood in its way. And this Ghidorah is the new alpha, and all, all the other creatures are just doing his bidding. They're, the, they're an extension of him. Although Godzilla was initially overwhelmed, it turned things around after it got a nuclear power boost. After winning a close battle, the heroic kaiju became the king of the monsters. But not all of humanity was willing to accept the beast as a savior. Top brass of the mysterious monarch organization will face another intense grilling as the government continues to push for extermination of the Titans. Apex Cybernetics wanted a way to keep Godzilla in check. By 2024, they found a way to use Ghidorah's remains and advanced technology to pilot a metal monstrosity. You caused all of this. If by all of this you mean I, and I alone, have given humanity a chance against the Titans, then yes, I will own that title. Godzilla's violent attempts to stop the project before it could be completed were misinterpreted as random attacks. While humanity was becoming apprehensive about the creature's motivations, concerned monarch scientists were trying to get Kong away from the devastated Skull Island. Dr. Andrews, did you see that? The habitat's not gonna hold much longer. We need to start thinking about off-site solutions. The island is the one thing that's kept him isolated. If he leaves, Godzilla will come for him. During transport, Godzilla attacked to try and prevent the ape from making a grab for power. Kong survived the attack and journeyed to the hollow earth. Although he picked up a new anti-kaiju, 
he still couldn't beat his rival during a heated rematch. But the two put their grudge aside when Apex's Mecha Godzilla broke free from its creators. What the hell is that? The two organic kaijus were able to stop the metal monster together. In the aftermath of the battle, Kong and Godzilla agreed to leave each other alone, but it wouldn't be long before the duo was brought back together. While all the kaiju were going about their normal routines, monarch scientists picked up a distress call coming from the Hollow Earth. After some investigation, a few brave heroes discovered that a twisted ape named the Scar King had an angry army ready to attack. Kong recognized the threat and teamed up with Godzilla to topple the Crooked Royal's crown. Kong can't stop this on his own. He won't be alone. It helped that Mothra was also there to help keep the peace. By the time the dust cleared, the big bad was dead, and both Godzilla and Kong were free to be kings of their own empires. Although it would be satisfying if the sprawling timeline ended with two kings living their best lives, we have a feeling there will be more stories to tell. The MonsterVerse can choose to expand on tales of the past or continue writing the future. Either way, fans will be there to learn more about all the terrifying and mystical monsters within a world that's far from hollow. On every continent, the Titans are triggering earthquakes, wildfires, tsunamis, and disasters we don't even have names for yet. What part of the MonsterVerse timeline surprised you the most? It may have been a rival alpha to Godzilla, battling for dominance over the other Titans. From cataclysmic clashes to awe-inspiring battles, it's now time to check out the best fights that have defined the MonsterVerse. He can handle them as long as he gets to them when they're still small. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 MonsterVerse fight scenes. Looks like round two goes to Kong. Godzilla will bring balance. Oh, I get it. Well, Sarazawa, let him fight axe. The king. For this list, we're looking at the best battles that occurred across the four connected kaiju films so far. As long as at least one giant monster is present, the fight scene will be considered. And as is to be expected, a spoiler alert is now in effect. What's your favorite MonsterVerse battle? Number 10. Ghidorah vs. Rodan and also Godzilla. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. After Rodan takes flight, Monarch decides to lead it straight towards Ghidorah's three heads. Let's lure this turkey away from the mainland straight to Monster Zero. ETA in two minutes. The two engage in a brief yet stunning aerial battle. Although the fiery Rodan is a scrappy fighter, Ghidorah quickly puts down his opponent with a decisive gravity beam. Just before it can turn its wrath on nearby Monarch scientists, Godzilla enters the fray. Oh God. He takes full advantage of his underwater setting to turn the tables and even remove one of Ghidorah's heads. Unfortunately, their battle was cut short when the Navy dropped an oxygen bomb on top of both Kaiju's heads. Even though this fight doesn't last long, it is still memorable for mixing stunning aerial and underwater combat. Looks like you got you, Rismak. Number 9. The Survivors Fight a Skull Crawler Kong Skull Island. Crash site's just on the other side of this valley. We'll cross through and make it to the highest point west. Uh uh. This place is a real no no, sir. While a group of survivors on Skull Island is trying to cross through a boneyard, they come face to face with an aggressive skull crawler. The kaiju takes advantage of the foggy surroundings to hide before jumping out for surprise attacks. To make matters worse, a bunch of psycho vultures join the fray in the middle of the fight. Fortunately, the survivors have several ways of fighting back. <laughs> They eventually take down the Psycho Vultures with a katana and use the lingering gases to finally blow the Skullcrawler away. The brilliant way the scene built tension and desperation made it stand out as one of the best human versus monster fights in the franchise. And I'm telling you, that thing that just shredded us was only the first of them. Now we're on their turf. Number 8. Kong Decimates the Warbats Godzilla vs. Kong That's beautiful. Kong is only in the Hollow Earth for a few minutes before he and his monarch entourage get an unwelcome visit from two warbats. After the giant ape takes out the first flying monstrosity with just one move, he rubs salt into the wound by using its body as a weapon. 
However, Kong quickly runs into trouble when a warbat wraps around Kong's body. Luckily, his human allies help free him. Full Delta, prepare to attack! Kong wastes no time to wreck the remaining warbat with grappling moves and his fists. This brief fight was a great introduction to the Hollow Earth, a good display of Kong's ferocity, and an example of his, um, unique habit of chowing down on fallen enemies. That's gross. Number 7. Ghidorah and Godzilla's Antarctic Battle – Godzilla, King of the Monsters as soon as Ghidorah emerged from the ice, Godzilla wanted a piece of the three-headed monster. After sizing each other up, the two exchange hard blows in an explosive battle. Godzilla tried to KO his opponent with his signature atomic breath. And not only does Ghidorah manage to dodge the blast, but it throws a gravity beam right back that knocks the big lizard flat. This was the moment we knew Godzilla had found someone who could challenge the King of the Monsters throne. Although Ghidorah flies away instead of finishing the fight, this clash was a great setup for the ferocious battles to come. Number 6. Godzilla takes on two Mutos. Godzilla. Let them fight. Godzilla had no problem fighting one massive unidentified terrestrial organism or Muto for short, when it came time for the final battle. But he began to struggle when a second one arrived to the party. Although the two overwhelm Godzilla for a time, he eventually sees an opening. After taking one down with his massive tail, he turns his attention to the second. The length of the fight, the uncertainty of the outcome, and huge amounts of carnage would have all been enough to make it memorable. But it entered the history books when Godzilla opened the final enemy's mouth and delivered a fatal blast of atomic breath. Hey, you need to bring more than two Mutos to a fight to defeat Godzilla. Number 5. Kong crushes a giant skull crawler. Kong Skull Island. Kong's down, let's go! Shortly after Kong survives a napalm attack, he's forced to do battle with a giant skull crawler. Although he manages to do a lot of damage with his fists and an improvised tree weapon, the fight takes a turn when he's knocked into some chains. The nearby human survivors decide to fire everything they've got at the skull crawlers until Kong gets back on his feet. Clear! Come on. When the ape stands again, he uses a propeller to inflict some serious pain. And although the skull crawler tries to make one last comeback, Kong makes sure to put it down for good. His skillful use of weapons and insane endurance made the visit to Skull Island worth it. Number 4. Godzilla Meets Kong Godzilla vs. Kong had to wait nearly six decades for these titans to have a rematch, and their first fight certainly did not disappoint. While Kong is taking a boat ride to Hollow Earth, Godzilla intercepts him and forces him into a fierce battle in the middle of the ocean. This battle makes expert use of the ocean setting. Every time Kong falls underwater, Godzilla gains a gigantic advantage. Although the giant ape does his best, the ocean setting proves too much of a hurdle for him to overcome. The humans have to help Kong play dead just so he can fight another day. This won't end until one of them submits. Shut it down. What? All of it. This intense and well choreographed sea battle further intensified the rivalry between two historic kaiju. As soon as we move, he'll be back. How are we supposed to get the rest of the way? Number 3. Ghidorah and Rodan vs. Godzilla and Mothra – Godzilla, King of the Monsters <laughs> The final fight in Godzilla, King of the Monsters feels like a titan battle royale. Just as Godzilla gets an advantage, Mothra swoops in to web Ghidorah up. It looks like a 2 vs. 1 kaiju fight until Rodan arrives to even the odds. 
Although Mothra is able to defeat Rodan, Ghidorah severely wounds Godzilla by dropping him from a great height. This gigantic battle was absurdly thrilling and wildly unpredictable. In a short time span, Mothra sacrifices herself and Godzilla unleashes a devastating blast that puts Ghidorah down for good. The huge scale and amount of kaiju content in this battle made for a matchup fit for a king. Jesus. Good thing he's on our side. For now. Number 2. Hong Kong Grudge Match Godzilla vs. Kong. How do you top a fight between Godzilla and Kong set on the water? Easy. You just have to give Kong an energy-absorbing axe and let him fight Godzilla in Hong Kong. The two titans play to their strengths as they fight in the beautiful neon lights of the city. While Godzilla leans on the pure destructive power of his atomic breath, Kong climbs and jumps around the city with ease. Neither titan is willing to back down from this grudge match. Unfortunately for the great ape, he loses his axe and dislocates his arm before falling in battle. A victorious Godzilla shows Kong mercy before stomping away. This fantastic battle finally gave us a decisive answer as to which titan would triumph. <laughs> Number 1. Godzilla and Kong vs. Mechagodzilla Godzilla vs. Kong what the hell is that? Although fans knew Mechagodzilla might be a problem, they could have never anticipated how devastating this mechanical monster would be. The robot's strength, arsenal, and battle intelligence proved too much for Godzilla to handle by himself. Enter Kong. teams up with Godzilla to help disable the mecha. Watching the two titans work together for combo attacks is awesome, but the coolest part comes when Godzilla uses his atomic breath to make Kong's axe more devastating. Once the ape slices the mecha to pieces, he holds its head up like a trophy. It won't be easy for the MonsterVerse to top this titanic clash, but if Mechagodzilla comes back, we will definitely buy front row tickets to see a fight as epic as this one was. Like many hard-hitting franchises, the MonsterVerse has plenty of unforgettable moments where fans like me just can't help press paws on. And here they are. Let them fight. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most paused monsterverse moments. For this list, we're looking at moments from the MonsterVerse that had us reaching for the pause button, either because of a small detail on screen like an Easter egg, or to appreciate just how epic the visuals are. What MonsterVerse moment do you always want to spend more time with? Number 20. The Opening Credits Easter Eggs – Godzilla From the very outset with the release of Godzilla in 2014, Legendary made it clear that they had big plans for the MonsterVerse. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. This is a dramatic franchise that takes its monsters seriously. That being said, it also knows how to have fun. In the opening credits of Godzilla, the cast is introduced by having their names placed in various lines of text about monsters that seem to have been pulled from secret government documents. This text is then promptly redacted. With a quick trigger finger, you can pause the film to read all of these fun little facts. 
The highlight is when the name Walter Malcolm momentarily appears on screen during Brian Cranston's credit, referencing his roles on Breaking Bad and Malcolm in the Middle. Say my name. Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. Number 19. The Mazer Turret, Godzilla, King of the Monsters While the MonsterVerse is very much building a universe of its own, the writers involved clearly have a deep love and respect for the original Toho Godzilla films. The vast majority of these references will go unnoticed by casual viewers, but even die-hard Godzilla fans might have missed this one. When Godzilla is approaching the underwater Monarch base, we see G-Team member Jackson Barnes prepping the defenses should the Titan become aggressive. Talk, ready to engage on my command. Eagle-eyed viewers have noticed that the on-screen display reads Mazer Turret. This is a nod to the Mazer Cannons, which were a staple of the Toho franchise. We don't learn much about them, but more scientifically-minded fans may want to pause the moment to take note of the on-screen technical specs. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Number 18. Marlowe's Jacket, Kong, Skull Island Now where have we seen that design before? You can scour the history of Godzilla and you will not find it. John C. Riley's Lieutenant Hank Marlowe is clearly a bit of an eccentric. Hey, what happened with the war? Did we win? Which one? Uh, that makes sense. We blame the island, but his jacket suggests that he's always been cut from a different cloth. That doesn't exactly look like a standard Air Force-issued uniform. And so, fans hit pause for a closer look at Bad For Your Health. It turns out that filmmaker Jordan Vote Roberts is an anime fan. And this jacket is actually an homage to the 1988 film Akira. Funnily enough, however, as fans pointed out, it also works as a nod to John C. Riley's character from Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Dr. Steve Brule. I'm Dr. Steve Brule, your green grocer. For your health! Number 17. Ford's Room, Godzilla. A real blink-and-you'll-miss-it little detail, there's a vintage kaiju poster in the 2014 Godzilla. Early in the film, we're taken to the Brody family home. Considering just how concerned Brian Cranston's Joe Brody is about the nuclear plant's seismic activity, chances are you weren't really paying much attention to the decor. Because I've been following these tremors since they started in the Philippines, and now they're in our own backyard. If you pause the film at just the right moment, however, you can see a poster in Ford's room depicting a kaiju attack in the style of the early Toho films. It's a fun nod to the history of the franchise and some foreshadowing, but it also raises questions. The monsters in question look a lot like the Mutos. Maybe Monarch hasn't done such a great job keeping the Titans under wraps. Number 16. The Briefing Room, Godzilla With so much intense discussion going on in this scene, you don't really have much time to process the archival images and clips being cast onto the projector. Like Ford, the viewer is really just trying to keep up with what we're being told by doctors Vivian Graham and Ishiro Serizawa. They are trying to kill it. Him. An ancient alpha predator. Millions of years older than mankind, from an age when the Earth was ten times more radioactive. Be that as it may, the briefing is accompanied by some pretty cool visuals. On repeat viewings, it's worth letting yourself pause whenever the camera cuts to the projector screen to really appreciate the attention to detail that went into the presentation. We call him Gojira. There are no major bombshells in terms of Easter eggs, but it certainly adds to the world building. Number 15. The Protest – Godzilla, King of the Monsters You've gotta love the creativity on display at a protest. When you've only got a poster board to work with and you want it to be legible from a distance, you really need to be efficient with your words. You cut right to the chase and say what you mean. Pausing this news footage, you can make out a few of the different signs being wielded by the protesters, and it would seem that the crowd is, generally speaking, not very kaiju-friendly. Thousands gathered in the Bay Area last night to honor the victims of the 2014 attacks, part of a wave of memorials and protests demanding that the secretive monster hunting coalition known as Monarch be held accountable. The visible signs say stuff like Titans equals monsters and kill the Titans. There's even one sign that says destroy all monsters, in a nice nod to the 1968 kaiju film of the same name, which starred Godzilla. Number 14. The Kaiju Map – Godzilla, King of the Monsters 
The third MonsterVerse film was something of a mixed bag. And we're not just talking about the variety of monsters on display. It divided critics, who took issues with the dialogue and character motivations. The mass extinction we feared has already begun, and we are the cause. We are the infection. No one can fault the viral marketing campaign that led up to the film, however. The Monarch website was packed with juicy details and invited fans to explore a world map detailing the location of various Monarch outposts and the kaiju contained within. Many of them, however, are classified, and so there's still value to checking out the Monarch map when it appears on screen in the film. We suspect that these films still have more secret details just waiting to be uncovered. Number 13. Foreshadowing Emails – Godzilla King of the Monsters Speaking of little details, have you taken the time to check out Madison Russell's emails? There's some fairly compelling, juicy stuff in there. She might only be 12 years old, but Madison's inbox is full of scientific, nature-focused news articles that show just how preoccupied she is with the end of the world. It is breakfast. It's uh, eggs, toast, and what was once bacon. To those watching the signs, the planet is clearly teetering on the edge of a major ecological catastrophe, as supported by these emails about the next great extinction event and declining bee populations. Madison's inbox also gives us insight into her strained relationship with her father, Kyle Chandler's Dr. Mark Russell. You are out of your goddamn mind! First you put our daughter's life in danger, now you get to decide the fate of the world, that's rich! Number 12. Rodan vs. Ghidorah – Godzilla, King of the Monsters There's nothing subtle about this scene. We're not pausing this moment to take note of small details or an on-screen easter egg. Nope, we're pausing the movie at various points in this clash to just marvel at the magnificence of these two titans as they take to the skies. <laughs> Say what you will about the movie's human characters, but there's not much you can say against the titular monsters. Brought to life with cutting-edge CGI technology, Rodan and Ghidorah both have a number of pause-worthy scenes throughout the film. But it's the moment just before they collide that you'll likely want to use as your desktop background. Oh god. Number 11. Is that Anguirus? Godzilla, King of the Monsters. There are so many titans in Godzilla King of the Monsters, it can be hard to keep track. Jesus. How many of these things are there? Seventeen. And counting after Godzilla. Seventeen? Some are only on screen for a matter of mere seconds. One that you likely missed altogether, however, was Anguirus. This kaiju, which is similar in appearance to an ankylosaurus, first appeared in the 1955 film Godzilla Raids Again. <laughs> While we don't see it in the flesh, we do get a glimpse of what we assume to be Anguirus's bones. While the Monarch team visits Godzilla's underwater lair, there's a lot to take in. After the warhead is detonated, the ensuing blast illuminates much of the environment, including a large skeleton. It's only in frame for a split second, so pausing is essential to get a proper look. Number 10. The Fish Tank and the Butterfly – Godzilla Mothra has always been one of the more popular kaiju. As such, when Legendary Pictures announced their plans for the MonsterVerse, fans were naturally anxious to see if the fan-favorite character would make an appearance. In the lead-up to the film's release, there was even speculation that the Mutos were in fact Mothra's minions. In the end, fans had to wait until 2019 for Mothra's grand unveiling. But Legendary did throw in some small teasers to tide fans over in the meantime. When the Brody men revisit their home in Genjira, the word Mothra can be seen on the old fish tank. There's also a poster of a butterfly in the classroom scene that bears a striking resemblance to Mothra. Number 9. King Ghidorah's Alpha Roar – Godzilla, King of the Monsters It's just so freaking epic. First Ghidorah establishes dominance over Rodan. Then he throws down with Godzilla. Then he survives the detonation of the oxygen bomb, which nearly killed Godzilla. But earning the king in its name, Ghidorah simply refuses to be beaten. And so, with all would-be challengers having been put squarely in their place, Ghidorah ascends to the summit of Isla Damara Volcano and lets out a fearsome cry. If there was ever any doubt about Ghidorah being a worthy match for Godzilla in the MonsterVerse, this surely put all such concerns to rest. The scene can only be described as painterly. Between the clouds, lighting, and lava, it is both terrifying and beautiful. Number 8. End Credit News Stories – Godzilla King of the Monsters There's nothing quite like a news story flashing on screen to make you want to push pause. 
The end credits of Godzilla King of the Monsters feature a number of eye-catching headlines, and those anxious to know where the MonsterVerse is headed will want to pause on each one to read the snippets that appear in frame. The headlines cover the activities of the Titans, Monarch's increased transparency, the Hollow Earth, the positive environmental impact of the Titans, and Godzilla's ongoing role as humanity's protector. We also see what looks to be a new Mothra egg. The most compelling headlines, however, are about Skull Island, the home of King Kong. In a nice touch, the monsters also get credited for having performed as themselves. Number 7. All Hail the King – Godzilla, King of the Monsters Long live the king. There was a fairly vocal minority of fans who found this scene to be a tad cheesy. But hey, if the Lion King can do it, why not the MonsterVerse? Wherever you land in the argument as to whether the Titans would literally bow or not when showing submission, there is no denying that it makes for an epic sight. And just from a cinematic perspective, it feels unprecedented in its scale. Perhaps most crucially, however, the scene is another opportunity to get up close and personal with the Titans, including some that only appear briefly in the film. If we're being honest, we don't really want to spend much time with the giant spider-looking one. That one we would prefer to keep at a distance. Number 6. Godzilla enters Boston and charges Ghidorah, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Ghidorah might have size on his side, not to mention the ability to regenerate his heads, but you simply cannot beat Godzilla's can-do spirit. After Dr. Sarazawa's inspiring sacrifice, a supercharged Godzilla steps back into the ring for another round. And by the ring, we mean the city of Boston. The two Alpha Titans charge at one another in what has to be one of the film's coolest moments. There's no one single frame that you want to stare at. You just want to watch it progress in frame-by-frame frame slow motion, appreciating the epic charge every step of the way. Sure, it would be nice if it was a bit more brightly lit, but the darkness does add to the ambiance. Number 5. Mothra's Transformations – Godzilla King of the Monsters While all the major titans in King of the Monsters made an impression in their own way, Mothra's the one that really stole our hearts. Titanus Mosura. Beautiful to behold and central to one of the film's most thrilling and emotional moments, Mothra also stole the show. But of all the moments we shared with her, it's her transformation that made the biggest impression. Scratch that, her two transformations. Mothra initially emerging from her egg was thrilling, but you want her to stop moving for a second so you could get a good look at her larval state. As for when she comes out from behind the waterfall, it's beautiful enough to bring a tear to your eye. Number 4. King Ghidorah is Coming – Kong Skull Island Kong's solo outing was an undeniably fun ride. There just weren't that many scenes that needed to be paused to be appreciated. A good old-fashioned pulpy, action-centric monster movie, it's all about movement. Skull Island earns a spot in our top 5, however, thanks to its awesome end credit scene. After watching Kong firmly establish his dominance over the creatures of Skull Island, not to mention the not-so-welcome visitors, we were treated to a slideshow of archival footage teasing a wider world full of monsters. This world never belonged to us. It belonged to them. The question is how long before they take it back. Kong is not the only king. The cave paintings aren't on screen very long, so the pause button comes in handy to study the outlines of Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. The best of the bunch teases the epic showdown to come. Number 3. Godzilla's Rebirth and Atomic Breath – Godzilla King of the Monsters There's a reason this image was used on the movie poster. Godzilla firing his atomic breath into the sky is easily one of the most iconic poses that the kaiju has ever struck, be it in the MonsterVerse or the Toho films. Freshly irradiated after his nuclear bomb of a wake-up call, Godzilla emerges from his undersea abode brimming with energy and ready for a fight. It 
It's beautiful in its own right, but it's the symbolism of the moment, at this point in the film, that earns it a place on the podium. Speaking of Godzilla's atomic breath, though, his kiss of death in the 2014 film definitely warrants a quick pause as well. Number 2. A Familiar Friend in the Nuclear Pulse – Godzilla King of the Monsters Humans schmoomans. The relationship between Godzilla and Mothra is the one we came here to see. Sadly, neither Mothra nor Godzilla is strong enough to overcome the great King Ghidorah. And so, in keeping with their symbiotic relationship, Mothra sacrifices herself, transferring her life force or energy into Godzilla in the process. This is basically Godzilla having gone Super Saiyan. Godzilla is so nuclear-charged that human-made structures are literally melting around him. But when he emits a targeted pulse at Ghidorah, it actually takes on the form of Mothra, accompanied by her cry, showing that she gave him more than just power. It's easy to miss on the first viewing, but you can clearly see her shape once you know to look for it. Number 1. The First Full Godzilla Reveal Godzilla Godzilla has been an international icon for decades. In North America, however, it's fair to say that he's often struggled to find his footing. Thankfully, that all changed in 2014. Sure, fans might have been disappointed with the titular kaiju's limited screen time, but when he did finally reveal himself to cinemagoers, Jaws hit the floor. He was larger than we ever could have imagined, and the CGI was flawless. Seeing his spiny back breaking through the water was a great tease. Filmmaker Gareth Edwards then upped the ante by having his colossal feet step into frame. When we finally came face to face with Godzilla and got to see him in all his glory, that's an image we wish we could have paused in the theater. Amidst all the monster-filled chaos, you best believe there have been some questionable decisions made. Some might even call them dumb. I'm sorry that Monster Zero isn't exactly what we were expecting, but we opened Pandora's box and there's no closing it now. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest decisions in the MonsterVerse. We're still going to that crash site. Three birds, one stone. You caused all of this. If by all of this you mean I, and I alone have given humanity a chance against the Titans, then yes, I will own that title. For this list, we're looking at choices made in this cinematic universe that came off as colossally misguided. In case you're not caught up on all four movies, the spoilers are going to be huge. What decision would you have made differently? Number 10. Splitting up. Godzilla. I can take Sam. No, no, no. Ford's on his way. You change your mind. The bus is leaving in 10 minutes. Then where are you, Ford? As San Francisco is evacuated, only clinical patients and children are being taken to the shelters. Elle thus stays behind and puts Sam on a bus with a co-worker. She's gonna look after you just for a little bit. Daddy's gonna be here soon, and I'm gonna just come get you right after. I promise. It's a difficult decision, but Elle assumes Sam is safe. There are two things we've learned from monster movies, though. Never split up and avoid national landmarks. And wouldn't you know it, the bus needs to travel over the Golden Gate Bridge. While the bus narrowly escapes a close encounter with Godzilla, Sam came this close to going down with the bridge. To be fair, Sam still would have been in jeopardy had he stayed with Elle, but having his mother around might have made this ordeal a little less traumatic. We suppose it worked out regardless. <laughs> Number 9. Playing with Fire – Kong – Skull Island Yeah, you smell that? That's death. As Hank Marlowe warns everyone, crossing through a gravesite that literally smells of death is a big no-no. Uh-uh. This place is a real no-no, sir. Despite the foreboding fumes and massive bones, Packard insists on pressing forward. I've only been here 28 years, what do I know? We guess we could justify this decision if the characters were extra careful. Instead, Cole chooses now of all times for a smoke break, and his discarded cigarette triggers an explosion. Cole, 
We don't got time for that, man. Put the cigarette out. Although Randa condemns Cole for his ineptitude, he isn't much smarter. Turns out that using a camera with a loud flash isn't the best idea. Oh, shit. By the time Randa realizes this, he's already in the skull crawler's mouth. At least Weaver saves the day by throwing a trusty lighter into one of the vents. Maybe she should have been the one on flamethrower duty. Number 8. Not Building Another Orca – Godzilla vs. Kong King of the Monsters introduces the Orca, a device that allows people to communicate with the Titans and, in some cases, calm them down. The Orca can be a deadly force in the wrong hands. And even in the right hands, it doesn't always have the desired effect. With some more research and refinements, though, the Orca could be the ultimate link between humans and Titans. After the Orca is destroyed, however, our heroes apparently do not consider building another one. I'm sorry, Madison. This is bigger than just you and me. While Gia is able to communicate with Kong through sign language, having a new and improved Orca on hand would have been helpful for when Godzilla enters the picture. Who knows, maybe it could have been used to ease tensions and broker peace between the two titans. Number 7. Cole's Sacrifice – Kong – Skull Island Kong! Come on, man, we gotta fall back! Go live your life. Get out of here. Several MonsterVerse characters have made noble sacrifices that, in hindsight, could have been avoided. Sure, Godzilla needed a nuclear jumpstart, but maybe it would have been smarter to get another submarine with a functioning firing system. You know, instead of sacrificing the scientist who knows the most about Godzilla. Son of a... Emma didn't need to drive off with the orca to lure Ghidorah. Cities around the globe have fallen under the wake of what many are calling the rise of the Titans. She could have left it on the ground and flown off with her family before Ghidorah arrived. The most questionable sacrifice comes from Earl Cole, who decides to blow himself up with the Skull Devil. The monster is too smart for that, however. The Skull Devil doesn't take the bait, and it tail whips Cole away before he explodes. Come on, come on, son of a bitch. At most, Cole's sacrifice bought his friends maybe one second. Number 6. Godzilla Not Using His Atomic Breath Earlier Godzilla most fans would agree that the best moment from 2014's Godzilla is the climactic battle where the titular king unleashes his kiss of death. It's the applause-worthy fatality we were waiting for. But why did we have to wait for it? Godzilla spends a good portion of the movie smacking the Mutos around. Instead of saving his atomic breath as his big finish, why not open with that attack? he probably would have won the fight much quicker. It's explained in a screenplay draft and novelization that the Muto's electromagnetic pulses weaken Godzilla's atomic breath, although this isn't made very clear in the actual film. Weakened or not, Godzilla's atomic breath gets the job done. We don't see why it was his last resort. Number 5. Packard's Revenge – Kong – Skull Island We need to turn back. Too sweet! Not as long as Chapman's still out there. I'm sorry, Colonel Packard. Chapman is dead. After the Boneyard debacle, you'd think that Packard would wise up and start taking advice from Hank. Being the big, tough military guy in a monster movie, though, Packard doubles down on the stupidity. Kong didn't kill Chapman. But he did kill these men. My men. Although survival should be the only priority, the mad soldier is hell-bent on taking Kong down to avenge his men. Even if Packard stood a chance against the beast, which he most certainly does not, Kong is the only force keeping the skull crawler situation under control. If you take away a species' natural competition, they'll proliferate out of control. Then we'll end them too, after we bring this thing down. I can't let you whoa, do that, whoa, whoa, Wait, hold your fire! While everyone else is eventually persuaded to flee, Packard would rather die than admit defeat. Accepting a fate that could have been easily dodged, Packard attempts to blow up Kong but gets a fistful of hurt. Die, you motherfucker. Samuel L. Jackson should have learned his lesson from that shark encounter. First, we're gonna seal out this Number 4. The Warhead Plan – Godzilla 
in the first MonsterVerse movie, it's established that this isn't humanity's first encounter with Godzilla. In 1954, the first time a nuclear submarine ever reached the lower depths, it awakened something. They tried destroying Godzilla in the 1950s, but a nuclear bomb will not stop the King of the Monsters. Hell, Godzilla feeds on radiation. So, when Godzilla resurfaces years later to face off against the Mutos, the military plans to wipe out all three monsters by using nuclear warheads. Admiral. Yes. Please don't do this. Although Sarazawa and Graham point out the obvious, Admiral William Stenz approves the plan. Granted, Sarazawa's let them fight strategy wasn't exactly ideal, but the warheads only make matters worse. Let them fight. The female Muto eats one, adding to the body count in the process. The other is used to make a nest, endangering even more lives. Number 3. Flying Towards a Giant Ape Kong Skull Island Word of advice, if you're piloting a helicopter and there's a giant ape, or really a giant anything on the horizon, do not fly directly at it. That monster will take you down with his bare paws. Either that or he'll throw a tree, a human, or another helicopter at you. Don't bother firing your puny guns. Your weapons are useless and will only antagonize the beast. Kill this son of a bitch. On that note, dropping seismic explosives on his turf isn't advised either. Okay, so just to make sure we're all on the same page, you see a big ape, turn the helicopter around immediately. Pull out now, pull out! I don't take orders from you! Anyway, the characters here introduce themselves to Kong by flying at him, shooting at him, and blowing up his home. It doesn't go well. <laughs> Number 2. Creating Mecha Godzilla Godzilla vs. Kong In theory, having a Titan sized robot operated by humans isn't a horrible idea. It worked well in Pacific Rim. With Godzilla serving as humanity's savior, however, Apex head Walter Simmons wants to put humans back on top, but Mechagodzilla's mere existence infuriates Godzilla. Upon acquiring the Hollow Earth energy source, Walter unwisely activates Mechagodzilla without doing any tests. We shouldn't rush this. We have no idea how this energy source will affect the Mecha. This results in Ghidorah's consciousness taking control of the Mech. Walter not only pays with his life, but he also creates a monster that not even Godzilla can defeat alone. Fortunately, Kong is around to lend a helping paw. Come to think of it, why didn't Godzilla bring some other titans for backup? He is the alpha predator, after all. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Going to Skull Island, Kong Skull Island. Afterwards, let's go to Jurassic Park and play with the Velociraptors. You have no idea how dangerous this is. I want five times that. Plus a bonus if we make it back. If? Ford telling L to wait for him, Godzilla. Dude, tell her to get out of Dodge ASAP and meet up later. I'm gonna be at the house with my summers. Now I'm gonna get you and Sam out. Okay. The military has a plan to deal with these things. Come on, I get you both, okay? Okay. Trusting Apex, Godzilla vs. Kong. Has a tech company in a monster movie ever been on the side of good? What are you doing? Extracting the sample. This is a power beyond our understanding. You can't just drill into it. Actually, we can. My father gets what he wants. That's Apex property now. Not listening to Hank, Kong Skull Island. Sorry, but it really bugs us when Hank goes unheated. West! We can't go west. That's where those skull things live. We have an old saying here, east is best, west is worst. That's why we say it. You know, southwest? We could talk about that, but you're gonna need a lot more guns if you're gonna go west. Transporting Kong via ship, Godzilla vs. Kong. You know Godzilla hangs out in the water, right? 
Who the idiot who came up with this idea? Number one, freeing Monster Zero, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. I'm sorry. Run. In a film that brings together numerous titans, the biggest monster is Dr. Emma Russell. As if putting her own daughter in constant danger isn't bad enough, Emma jeopardizes the entire world by releasing King Ghidorah. Not to mention Rodan. You got a catchy name for this one? Local legends call it Rodan, the fire demon. That's comforting. While Emma isn't the film's main human antagonist, a distinction that goes to eco-terrorist Alan Jonah, her reasoning is the most ludicrous. I'm saving the world. But by releasing those things, that doesn't make sense. Emma believes that by awakening the Titans, the world can begin to heal from humanity's mistakes. As someone who was in San Francisco when all hell breaks loose, Emma should know that Titans can cause more damage in several days than humans have throughout the centuries. Even Emma eventually realizes the holes in her logic. But by then, Pandora's box is wide open. This isn't coexistence. This is extinction. Okay, what better way to end things today than with a look at all the standout moments that have made the MonsterVerse a true cinematic spectacle? Son of a... Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best MonsterVerse moments. For this list, we're exploring the greatest and most memorable moments from the four films in the MonsterVerse franchise. A major spoiler alert is now in effect. What's your absolute favorite MonsterVerse moment? Number 20. Journey to the Hollow Earth – Godzilla vs. Kong most refreshing aspects of Godzilla vs. Kong were definitely its vibrant visuals, and they are on full display in this scene. Leading the Apex team down the Antarctic Tunnel, Kong swings his way down until a portal of sorts shoots them the rest of the way to the Hollow Earth. There, we're presented with a lush and almost prehistoric landscape one that Kong's ancestors called home. It isn't long, though, until Kong and the gang are greeted by the region's dominant species in the form of war bats. Though nearly suffocated, Kong gains the upper hand and shows he's here to stay. He celebrates with a refreshing batch of, um, little intense Kong, don't you think? That's gross. Number 19. Long-awaited reunion. Kong Skull Island. Most of this list will naturally feature plenty of badass monster fights, but that doesn't mean the MonsterVerse doesn't have its tender moments, too. You are more beautiful than a hot dog and a beer at Wrigley Field on opening day. Having spent 30 years stranded on Skull Island, Lieutenant Hank Marlowe began to accept his new life by learning about the area's flora and fauna and connecting with the local tribes. And as a result, all but forgot his old life back home. I guess this is goodbye. That's what makes this reunion scene shown during the credits so great. A bewildered Mrs. Marlowe is finally reunited with her long-lost husband, thought to have perished in the war long ago. We also get to see Hank meet his grown son for the first time, and everything seems to be wrapped up with a nice little bow. Number 18, Mecha Godzilla Takes Over, Godzilla vs. Kong. The Apex Titan of my own hand. <laughs> it's time to show the world what you can do. As Apex soon learned, playing with the remains of an evil kaiju head probably wasn't a good idea. In a desperate bid to reclaim humanity's spot as the world's apex predator, oh, that's why they're called that, CEO Walter Simmons utilizes the remaining Ghidorah skull to power the neural link between Mechagodzilla and Ren Serizawa, son of the late Ishiro Serizawa.
The trouble is, something goes wrong with the connection, and Mechagodzilla gains autonomy. Making sure the power-hungry villain reaps what he sows, Mechagodzilla wipes out his creator with one fell swoop. Sarazawa is subsequently fried, and suddenly we've got something on the loose much more dangerous than Godzilla. Number 17. Kong Battles the Giant Squid Kong Skull Island The ruler of Skull Island might not have anything as fearsome as Ghidorah to contend with, but his domain is nonetheless home to some truly terrifying creatures. So, sadly, Kong rarely has a quiet moment to himself. Pausing to tend to his wounds in the lake, Kong becomes aware that a deadly mire squid is lurking beneath the surface. For those who don't know, this is how the mire squid hunts. It's an ambush predator. The squid begins wrapping Kong in its tentacles, but ultimately proves no match for the king of Skull Island, who kills it with a well-placed head stomp. get a little gross when Kong proceeds to slurp up the severed tentacles of the squid. It's stomach churning, sure, but it's undeniably memorable. Number 16. Preston Packard vs. Kong Kong Skull Island Kong didn't kill Chapman. But he did kill these men. My men. There are some men who are happy to coexist with the many creatures who walk our planet. And then there are those who firmly believe that humankind is meant to rule over all other life on Earth. It's safe to say that Samuel L. Jackson's character Preston Packard fits squarely into the latter category. It's time to show Kong that man is king. He's basically never met an enemy he can't beat. And so, despite the seemingly insurmountable challenge that Kong presents, he crafts an elaborate scheme to take down the King of Skull Island. It involves a lake of fire, and it seems to work. Kong eventually keels over. But a skull crawler crashes the party, Packard's fate is sealed, and it's Kong who gets the last laugh. That's gotta hurt. Die, you motherfucker. Number 15. Mothra's Transformation Godzilla King of the Monsters. The titans we met in Godzilla King of the Monsters are best described as downright terrifying, but Mothra feels like a different sort of creature. A reminder that for all their sharp spiny bits, claws, and gnashing teeth, the titans can also be beautiful. Even in her larval form after bursting forth from her egg, Mothra is sort of cute. When she later emerges from her cocoon behind the waterfall, however, the scene is downright stunning. Emitting an otherworldly blue light and beating her massive wings, Mothra looks like a true work of art. No wonder ancient civilizations worship the creature as a god. There is definitely something divine about being in her presence. Beautiful. Mothra, queen of the monsters. Number 14, Halo Jump, Godzilla. That's why we'll be conducting a halo insertion. Jumping altitude will be 30,000 feet. We'll just skate to the top and drop. Here, and here. Given all the kaiju action that the MonsterVerse delivers, these films could easily settle for run-of-the-mill cinematography. This is perhaps the most visually arresting sequence from the 2014 film, and it doesn't even involve the titular creature until the very end. In this scene, soldiers perform a halo jump, and their descent will take your breath away. Like warrior angels falling from heaven, they leave behind a beautiful sunny horizon, piercing the clouds to enter hell on earth. The red smoke of their flares adds to the visual drama, while the first-person perspective of the fall adds an intense sense of claustrophobia. When Godzilla comes into view, it is shiver-inducing. Number 13, Kong vs. the Helicopters, Kong Skull Island. Oh my God. Kong is king on Skull Island, and he takes none too kindly to outsiders. Apparently, that goes double for flying machines that appear to be attacking his home. Part of what makes this sudden attack so big in terms of impact is the setup. 
paranoid by Black Sabbath plays over an exciting montage of the team carrying out their explosive research. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, the world is upended when a tree comes flying into one of the helicopters. Kong quickly proceeds to take down the choppers with brutal efficiency, and with most of it being shown from the perspective of one of the helicopters as it goes down, it makes for a uniquely harrowing experience. Oh God, Fox, Fox. Number 12. Rodan vs. Ghidorah – Godzilla – King of the Monsters It's not a coincidence that Monster Zero thing is headed here. It's reacting to Big Bird's cries. That means it's coming for food, a fight, or a something more intimate. As we mentioned in our first list, when Rodan rises from his volcanic home in Mexico, the immediate effect is devastating. Not only is there a volcanic eruption, but his wing beat creates hurricane winds. To make matters worse, like Ghidorah, Rodan seems to be inherently violent. Running out of options, Monarch tries to use this natural aggression to their favor, leading Rodan on a collision course with Ghidorah. two clash in a tangle of beating wings, snapping jaws, and sharp talons. But despite Rodan's enthusiasm, it quickly becomes apparent who the Alpha is. The fight doesn't last long, but it was a pleasure to watch while it did. In that finishing move, talk about an effective way to establish dominance. Number 11. Battle at Sea – Godzilla vs. Kong What'd you say? Godzilla. When the trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong dropped, we were so ready for the first confrontation. And their showdown on and around an aircraft carrier did not disappoint. Interrupting Apex's voyage to Antarctica with Kong is the great kaiju himself as he quickly engages with the great ape. holds his own, but proves to be at a severe disadvantage out in the open water. Godzilla tries to capitalize on this, as he's eventually able to drag Kong down to the briny depths. Desperate to save Kong, the human team distracts Godzilla long enough for Kong to resurface. Fearing a Godzilla counterattack, the humans feign defeat by powering down, letting Godzilla leave thinking he's won. He might have taken this round, but Kong will rebound for sure. Number 10. The Airport Fight – Godzilla An airport is the sort of place where a lot of things can go wrong. Lost luggage, cancelled flights, getting flagged for extra security screenings – we could go on all day. Thankfully, however, most of us have never had to deal with a kaiju showdown breaking out on the tarmac. Roger, target in sight, 2 o'clock, 300 meters. Warlock 6, X-01, target confirmed. When a MUTO begins tearing through the airport, the military proves ineffective, and that's when the big guy arrives. Would-be passengers look out the massive airport windows at a fiery explosion as Godzilla's colossal foot steps into frame. It is an epic moment. We don't get to see a whole lot of the conflict between Godzilla and the MUTO, but it's the first time in the MonsterVerse that we really get a sense of Godzilla's size and power. Number 9. The Death of Dr. Ishiro Serizawa – Godzilla King of the Monsters Sometimes, the only way to heal our wounds is to make peace with the demons who created them. The MonsterVerse knows how to deliver satisfying battles, but it also manages to keep its stories grounded in human emotion. For all those who fear and hate him, Godzilla also has a fair number of fans, but none bigger than Dr. Ishiro Serizawa. The only question is, what part will we play? Did you just make that up? No. I read it in a fortune cookie once. The character is named for the hugely influential original Godzilla director Ishiro Honda and Dr. Serizawa, the scientist who similarly sacrificed himself in the 1954 film. The original Dr. Serizawa died defeating Godzilla, 
and protecting the secrets of his oxygen destroyer. In a nice inversion of this, Ken Watanabe's Dr. Ishiro Serizawa dies in an intimate moment with a wounded Godzilla, detonating a bomb not to kill the creature, but to help him recover. It's an incredibly touching moment between man and Titan. Number 8. Calling All Titans – Godzilla, King of the Monsters After the apparent death of his alpha rival Godzilla, and having just regained his status as a three-headed beast, Ghidorah stands atop Rodan's volcanic home and proclaims his dominance for all to hear. The moment only lasts a few short seconds, but it is as beautiful as it is terrifying, leaving a lasting impression on the audience. Moscow. London, Washington, D.C., all under attack. On every continent, the Titans are triggering earthquakes, wildfires, tsunamis, and disasters we don't even have names for yet. This roar, however, is more than a declaration of victory. It's an alpha call commanding Titans around the globe to rise and wreak havoc. We sadly don't get to spend much time with these secondary titans, but they make the most of their brief time in the spotlight. Oil fields are obliterated, mountains come to life. As the news cameras start rolling, it quickly becomes clear that these various kaiju are ushering in the end of days. And this Ghidorah is the new alpha, and all, all the other creatures are just doing his bidding. They're, the, they're an extension of him. Number 7. Mothra Saves Godzilla – Godzilla, King of the Monsters <laughs> Over the course of the films, it's made clear that despite his destructive methods, Godzilla is a savior of sorts. That being said, no one would call him cute or sentimental. And as for the rest of the Titans, well, even less so. That's what makes this moment between Godzilla and Mothra so special. After pulling off one of the smoothest sneak attacks in kaiju cinema history, a badly wounded Mothra flies over to a recently fallen Godzilla. We know that the beautiful Titan shares a symbiotic relationship with Godzilla, but this scene makes it clear that their dynamic is more than just mutually beneficial. She treats him with tenderness and care, before sacrificing herself so that he can continue the fight. <laughs> Number 6. All Hail the King – Godzilla, King of the Monsters Some might have found this scene to be a bit cheesy, but we think it's important to remember the campy roots of the franchise. Since first making his presence felt on the big screen in 1954, Godzilla and his kaiju peers have rarely shied away from overly dramatic moments, nor have the filmmakers avoided bold creative decisions. And so we think this moment is perfectly epic and befitting of the franchise. Having defeated Ghidorah, Godzilla has re-established his dominance as the Alpha, and so the various titans assemble around him to make their signs of submission. Letting out a mighty roar, a victorious Godzilla firmly re-establishes his title as King of the Monsters. Number 5. Godzilla Obliterates the Muto – Godzilla there was plenty of epic kaiju action in King of the Monsters, there's no single moment in the MonsterVerse that feels better executed than this one from the 2014 film. After duking it out with the various Mutos, Godzilla finally goes down under the weight of a collapsing building. Without Godzilla to stop her, the massive female Muto pursues Ford. But just as she's about to end the soldier's life, an exhausted Godzilla manages to come to the rescue, again. Our heroic titan not only delivers a killing blow, but also showcases his creativity in the process. Simply perfect.
Number 4. Hong Kong Smackdown – Godzilla vs. Kong This is the heavyweight SmackDown we were promised, and it more than delivered. Kong emerges from the hollow earth in Hong Kong, <laughs> King Kong in Hong Kong, anyway, where he and Godzilla have the fight of their giant lives. Kong has to go on the run from Godzilla's atomic breath, but he's ultimately able to use his axe to absorb it and deal Godzilla some serious punishment. Down but never out, Godzilla shakes it off and re-enters the fight, and this time he gets the better of Kong. With one foot pinning the ape to the ground, they each let out a roar in one of the film's best shots. With Kong's heart rate slowing, Godzilla leaves him to his fate. Number 3. Godzilla and Kong vs. Mechagodzilla – Godzilla vs. Kong We weren't sure how Mechagodzilla was going to keep pace, seeing as his classic appearances portray him as rather, well, mechanical. But he absolutely owns here, laying the smackdown on his organic counterpart. Aware they need Kong to intervene, Lind and company manage to use the energy Apex harvested from the Hollow Earth to give him a kickstart. Kong takes a crack at Mechagodzilla himself, but he too is overwhelmed. It isn't until Godzilla uses his atomic breath to charge Kong's axe that the tables turn, at which point Kong eviscerates the mechanical monstrosity. Having saved the day, the two titular titans acknowledge each other before going their separate ways sure to meet again. And we cannot wait for that day to come. Number 2. Godzilla arrives to his classic theme, Godzilla King of the Monsters. In the movie's third act, a rejuvenated Godzilla makes his way to Boston to reclaim his rightful title from Ghidorah. The film is full of beautiful cinematic moments, but this might be the single most evocative shot of the entire film. Unable to outrun Ghidorah anymore, Madison's demise seems imminent. The King Has Arrived Godzilla lets out a roar and then slowly approaches as a reinterpretation of his classic theme, written by Akira Ifukube and released in 1954, begins to play. For die-hard fans, the visuals paired with this iconic theme are enough to bring a tear to your eye. Sirasawa. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. This time we join the fight, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Sarazawa, let him fight action. I used to love it when he said that. No, this time we join the fight. Kong's shoulder, Godzilla versus Kong. <laughs> Birth of Mothra, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Meet Titanus Mosura, or as we like to call her, Mothra. Number 1. Fire Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Oh boy, Godzilla's radiation levels are going through the roof. We got about 12 minutes before he goes thermonuclear. After being repeatedly beaten by Ghidorah, Godzilla got a much needed boost, first from the nuclear detonation, and then again, most crucially, from Mothra. 
Absorbing Mothra's energy essentially causes Godzilla to go thermonuclear, his skin radiating red and the ground melting around him. Long-time Godzilla fans will tell you, however, this isn't the first time the character has been set aflame, so to speak. Fire Godzilla is a clear nod to Burning Godzilla, a form that the King of Monsters took on after absorbing radiation from uranium on Birth Island in the 1995 movie Godzilla vs. Destoroyah. As such, Fire Godzilla is not only awesome in its own right, but also a nice homage to the franchise history, making this moment a cut above the rest. All right, well, that's going to do it for this colossal deep dive into the MonsterVerse. Hope you enjoyed watching. I definitely did. I've been Matt from Watch Mojo, and I'll see you next time.